So I've wanted to talk about this for a while, and I've decided that I should just make the video because I've been pretty impatient. And that's the dark work of Junji Ito. I've touched the subject slightly in this video, so go check it out right now if you haven't. I'm going to be going a lot more in depth in this video of this dark man's mind, his work, and why it's terrifying. Junji Ito is a Japanese manga artist, born in 1963. As a child, he was influenced by Kazuo Umezu, whose work is equally as terrifying. He worked as a dental technician when he first started writing manga in the 90s and late 80s. That story later turned into his most well-known story, Tomie, a succubus who drives men crazy. This was also his first publicized work. Ito also says that H.P. Lovecraft is one of his major influences, as seen with the cosmic horror story that is his most read story in America, Uzumaki. Ito also worked on the Silent Hills game, a ninth edition into the Silent Hills series, before it was cancelled. Junji Ito made many publications of his work, some more well-known than others. Tomie, Gyo, and Uzumaki, respectively, are arguably the most well-known in the United States. Let's tackle each story, one by one, to see why they truly scare us to this day. A large part of what makes Junji Ito's work so frightening are the sharp visuals you see whenever turning each page. The dark, contrasting colors and the eerie-looking shadows he painstakingly draws. They etch into your mind. The amount of detail he puts on every panel makes the reader stop and stare, each new pen stroke a detail that forms a larger, horrifying painting. A painting of one's greatest fear. Uzumaki definitely lives up to this man's reputation, as every spiral drawn sucks you into this eerie story of a town possessed not by spirits, but in everyday shape. And as time goes on, and everyone spirals into madness, the reader soon finds out there is no escape. In fact, there has never been an escape. Gyo has some fairly creepy imagery as well, ranging from a shark with legs attacking you right outside your door, to a human arm filled with gas crawling around on the floor. And as soon as we try to spend time finding out what is causing this horrible outburst, it's already too late. Tomie strikes fear into the heart of man, an unexplainable succubus feasts on man and fueled by the hate it brings, and the lust we cannot control. We try to stop it, but we can't. We try all we can, but we simply can't do anything. We are insignificant. And that is also what makes Junji Ito's work as horrifying as it is. The use of H.P. Lovecraft's influence is how he happened to hone on to the cosmic horror, a horror that, once perceived, kills us. Something as gargantuous as our existing universe, a force that reminds us of how truly insignificant we really are. This spiral cannot be explained, so therefore it can't be defeated. Another great way he manipulates our world to be as terrifying as he portrays it is making the ordinary horrifying. As anyone can make the woods or an abandoned house scary, but a regular city? A neighborhood? Your bedroom? In Junji Ito's short manga, The Window Next Door, a horrifying creature lives only a few feet away just out of view when you're getting ready for bed, and it gets closer and closer. In a way, this is what truly makes every cursed character in this story go mad, their everyday lives tormented, broken by unexplainable and unavoidable forces just beyond comprehension. 
and these two combined, a horrid depiction of reality and something not of this world, makes what we know as the mind behind Japan's most feared and celebrated horror mangas of our time, Junji Ito. Anyway, guys, I'm so sorry about this kind of very dark episode, but uh, I just really hope you guys enjoy it. And if you guys want more of this kind of creepy stuff, which, I, by the way, I absolutely love, then, you know, just tell me down in the comments. Or if you just like this new kind of style of video, just, you know, tell me and whatnot. And as always, uh, uh, follow me.